Good morning on the first Sunday in May 2021. Bless your hearts. Thank you for being here. If you are joining us in streaming, welcome. I hope you're well. We've had a wonderful time of worship here this morning already. Uh, the Church of Christ is open. We're glad to share with you streaming, but we would be glad to see you here because we uh, just enjoyed some great fellowship here this morning. I know I did. We uh, enjoyed the Lord's Supper this morning is the wrong way to say it, not enjoy it. But we did remember. I will stop again. For me, I increased the. I have to stop again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because when we celebrated the Lord's Supper here today, in remembrance of you, I really did remember you. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that. I went to church with a lady a long, many years ago, and when uh, my family and we were young Christians, and she'd been going to church for a while. And there were times where she'd say, I feel like I've been to church. And I tell you already right now on May 2nd, I feel like I've been to church. Thank you for that. There is something about the gathering of the saints. There's something about it. Where to start? Who are you? Who am I? How would you answer the question? Who are you? Or if you had to describe me, how would you say? If somebody said, who's Craig? How would you describe him? I think often when we describe people to each other, we start with what they do. Maybe where they live. You know the guy that lives over on Mill Street. He's a bus driver. Or you might say he's the preacher. Or you might say he is someone's dad. Or he's Rob's son. Or he's a lot of descriptive terms of who he is. I have titles. I have titles. I am someone's father. Uh, someone's son, I'm a neighbor, I'm an employee. I could probably think of things all day long of words to describe who I am. Who am I? In Matthew, in the 18th chapter, and uh, Jesus says, I believe it's a uh, well, let's see. I'll open this book because it was right where we were. We sang, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, this morning. It's 1014 in the hymnal. But right before that, our worship leader, Kevin, picked the song out, not knowing that the Spirit had led him to pick the song out. Because Matthew 18 begins with, Matthew, the 18th chapter, the book of Matthew, New Testament, Gospel, the first book, first book of the New Testament, the 18th chapter begins with, at that time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? 
He called a little child and had him stand among them, and he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, who humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. Later, in this same gospel, in the 19th chapter, there is a story about a young man. And I've heard him called the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler comes to Jesus. And in the 16th verse, he begins. Now a man came to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? He says, Why do you ask me what is good? Jesus replied, There's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, obey the commandments. Which ones? The man inquired. Jesus replied, Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. The young man heard of this, heard this. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. I've heard it preached, and I don't believe this is a teaching that only poor people go to heaven. I believe the rich young ruler was aware that he was all three of those things. Rich, young, powerful. What did, the, uh, what did Satan tempt Jesus with? Basically, he says, wouldn't you like to be rich, young, healthy, powerful, in control? Because I think the rich young ruler was conscious of the fact that he had some titles. That when he thought of himself, he realized, I am rich, I'm young, and I'm powerful. And when Jesus says, you need to give it all away, sell it, give it to the poor, come and follow me. And earlier in the scripture where I said, where we read, unless you become like a little child. It's easy for me, like the rich young ruler, to start thinking about titles that I may have, or maybe I've given them myself. That during the day, between 6 o'clock and 5 o'clock, on a, on a weekday, I consider myself a bus driver, a maintenance guy. Or maybe in the evening, a husband or a father. These are the titles that might come to mind. And as I've become more mature and more trips around the sun, I think of myself as supposed to be those things. I'm supposed to be a grown-up man. But 
Jesus says, unless you're like a little child, what is the most important title that I have? What stopped the rich young man, rich young ruler? What was Christ advising him? I don't think he was telling him, you need to be poor. I think he was saying, you need to look at your titles. You need to think about what you are first thing first. Unless you become a child. Do you feel like a child today? Is the first thing when you describe yourself to yourself is, I'm a child? Because it should be. Now, not all of us are minors. By minors, I mean under the age of whatever adult is. No, I've, I've been around the sun more times than that. As a matter of fact, I am a senior citizen. I am an old man or an old lady. Well, those are total, those are titles too. Those are things. Those are uh, positions you've given to yourself. Titles you've given yourself. When Jesus says, "Unless you are a child." calls us to be, first and foremost, children, dependent children. Wow, what a great day my wife and I had yesterday when we studied that and said, let's just be children today. Yeah, we'll, we'll drive the car and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll be responsible but let's just be children. Let's take what let's take what the Father brings today and not plan and not overthink or come up with reasons why not. And we started out, uh, we were in Reno, and we wound up in Grass Valley. What a great day we had. Uh, we were just we left the hotel to get glasses. We wound up not coming home for 13 hours, and we just were children all day. We were okay. We were, the next day that came was fine. It was so awesome. And I was touched by this scripture, and reinforced this morning was picked up. The rich young ruler, Remember, and isn't that what the world tells us the best thing you can be is? Rich? Young? Powerful? And that if you aren't any of those things, you're less than. That's what you should go for, and if you don't have those, well, keep, keep working at it. But Jesus says, unless you change and realize that the greatest thing that you can be is a child of God. It might be easier for someone who defines himself with titles. If I define myself as a victim or an addict, a sinner, those are easier titles to give away. Because he says the same thing about that if, if, if the rich young ruler were a reprobate tax collector, it would be easier. So what you need to do is get rid of those titles. Uh, I, those are easier titles to get rid of. Uh, I'm a victim. Or I have a disease. How many people, when they are diagnosed with a disease, become that? When the diagnosis is cancer, and people think, oh, they have cancer. We have a word for someone who has diabetes. They're called a diabetic. But my daughter taught me that we're not supposed to define people 
by their disease. For instance, if you're working with children, they might be, they might have diabetes, diabetes, but you wouldn't say that's a diabetic. You would say that's a child who has diabetes. It's very different. And that every child is worthy of love, nurture, and respect. So when we define someone, a child or any person, by their disease or by their sin or even by their title, whether it be rich young ruler or Republican or Democrat or black or white or you know, skin color is another way to give someone a title. Jesus says that's not the most important thing you are. The most important thing isn't your job. The most important thing isn't your political affiliation or either your church denomination. The most important title you have is child. You are my child. I believe that's one of the reasons in the Bible he says, call him no man father. I am your father. And you're my child. And you'll always be my child. And you should think of yourself as my child. And you should trust me as a child. Forgive me, Father, that as I make more trips around the sun, I start to think that I'm responsible or even capable of affecting anything when in fact you're in charge. Thank you, Lord, that you are in charge. And better yet, the best thing I could be is not a doctor, a lawyer, a rich young ruler, a movie star, a anything you can think of. The best thing I can be is your child first unless you become like a little child because that's what he wants and that's also how he loves you you know you, you're one of the kids what a great thing when they ask Jesus how do we pray he says pray like this start with what father you know when you say when you refer to God as Father, you say something about God, but you're saying something about you. When you say Father, you're saying child, you're saying son or daughter. Father, son. Father, daughter. Wow. Maybe that's why Jesus said start there. When you pray, start here. Father. Remember when the Pharisee prayed? Uh, Thank you, Lord, that I'm not like that. No. Start with Dad. Because when, if that's Father, by default, I am child. I am a child of God. And what a great day I had yesterday being a child and not being any of those other labels. And what is the golden rule? What is the great commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, but love others. But what about my enemies? Whoops. You gave them, I just gave, I just gave someone a label, enemy. If I'm supposed to think of myself first as child, what should I think of them first? Child. Think of, I won't give a name, you put in the name. Think of your favorite politician, because if you have one, then you have someone who represents the other side. You think of that, and they, I'm being taught to think of 
us, and them. We are fill in the blank. They are the fill in the blank. But the Bible says, I am a child. And they are children, too. Worthy of love, nurture, and respect. Their other titles are secondary. They are children. They may be, or I may be, a prodigal child, but still a child. And I believe that's why Jesus said, start there. Would you pray? Father, child. He said, unless you become like a child, unless you're a child, unless your main title in life is, what are you? And do I describe myself as that? I should. Tell me about yourself. My name's Craig. I'm a child of God. And is it for their benefit, for the hearer's benefit, or is it for my benefit to realize I am Craig. I am a child of God. And in your, where you are right now, out loud or in your head. Say the same thing about yourself. I am a child of God. And everybody I encounter today, they are, they are children of God, worthy of love, nurture, and respect. Not based on their title, whether they are rich, young, or rulers, or whether they are Democrats, or whether they are white, or whether they are black. I feel like I'm being taught to value those labels more than anything else. That before I can look at a person, I have to put figure out what their labels are, what their past is, what their race, what their ethnology is, uh, all those things. Ethnicity, ethnology? I think ethnicity was the word I was going for. Because isn't there a whole industry based on what is your ethnicity? Send us some of your DNA, and we'll tell you what you are. We'll give you. The, we'll send you the label. What a terrible thing! I mean, interesting, entertaining, but secondary to the fact that Jesus says, "If you are in Christ, you are a new creation. You are born again." Your ethnicity is now, you share DNA with God. You are a child of God. And that is the main thing. Not whether you're 15% Northern European, but that you are 100% child of God. That's, that's where it is. Because if God is your father, we heard it called confidence today, but we agreed that that's where the faith is. Does anything bad ever happen? Well, there are difficult circumstances, but if God is my father and I am his child, I am okie dokie. I am not defined by whether I'm a victim of a disease or a group of people or my own bad decisions. I am a child, unless you become a child. Good morning, everybody. I want you to go out of here today like children. Because you are children. No matter how many trips around the sun you have made. Uh, April 30th was, uh, what was that, the day before yesterday? My sainted mother, I loved her, I loved, loved, loved my mother. She would have been 100. Uh, born in 1921. I made some trips around the sun, but I guarantee you, child. Child of God. Look forward to seeing it. Look forward to seeing you all, too. I'm glad to see you today. Come on in. Come in next week. We'll behave like children. Have a great
great day. That's what I have. Thank you. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. When I go to work, I'm going to let it shine.